So this is the pulse propagation. We say that the time domain pulse. So, so remember our approach. We started with the time domain uh, pulse A zero T. We did a Fourier transform of that. Uh, we got B uh, zero omega at z equal to zero. That propagated through the fiber. At the end of the fiber, you have uh, you know how each frequency has uh, evolved at the end of the fiber. So you end up with B z omega. You do an inverse Fourier transform of this is omega omega and this is time. You do an inverse Fourier transform, you will get back your uh, time domain. So this inverse Fourier transform is what we are representing here. B z t is equal to. So this is just an expansion uh, inverse Fourier transform written uh, properly. 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to infinity. This is the frequency domain and e power j omega t d omega. So I will now substitute beta which is beta naught plus beta 1 omega plus beta 2 omega square plus 1 6. So this is just the Taylor expansion of beta of omega. Right. So I substitute the Taylor expansion. I have to do this integration from minus infinity to infinity with respect to uh, omega to get back to my time domain. But you see here, uh, I know that delta omega is actually, this delta omega is actually omega minus omega naught. This is also in terms of omega minus omega naught. So the variable here seems to be omega minus omega naught. Uh, but here I have a variable uh, which is omega t. So how do I make this variable to omega minus omega naught? All what I can do is, I can write this also as omega minus omega naught, provided I multiply uh, here with e power j omega naught t. So I am basically multiplying e power j omega naught t and e power minus j omega naught t to this equation. e power j omega naught t, I can uh, take it out of this uh, integration because uh, the running variable for integration is omega. Similarly, uh, I can take uh, beta naught times z also out of this integration because uh, they are constants. And what will I end up here is this e power j omega minus omega naught t, which is e power delta omega. So I can then write the entire expression in terms of delta omega. That's what I have done here. If I write b omega, if I write omega is equal, delta omega is equal to omega minus omega naught, the derivative d omega is also the same because omega naught is a constant. I can simply write this d omega as d of delta omega, no harm in that. So, um, so, so what I have is I can write b z of t, this is the output pulse in the time domain as something a times this constant e power j omega naught t minus beta z, beta naught z. It is constant with respect to delta omega, otherwise it is varying with time and with uh, location. So I can now say that my output uh, of the fiber is some envelope a z t times e power j omega naught t minus beta naught z. These are these are uh, frequency and the propagation constant at the carrier. So this is representing the so as as your pulse propagate uh, as in the frequency domain. Uh, this term represents the propagation of the center of the pulse the carrier propagation, but the envelope is now uh, decided by a z t and what is this a z t? It is this integral. a z t is this 1 by 2 pi and this integral and of course this d omega is replaced with d delta omega. So this whole equation has a variable delta omega. So it means that a z t is now a summation over, it is an integration over delta omega, running variable delta omega and what is delta omega? omega minus omega naught is delta omega and so I am extending, so essentially I am integrating over minus infinity to infinity frequency and I integrate or uh, integrate this term, I end up with uh, the output pulse. Uh, but now a small job that is left is uh, this A is a function of Z, it is as the as, as uh, pulse propagates through the fiber, uh, this uh, Z changes, so this phase changes. So the integration answer will keep changing. So how do I know what is the rate of change of A with respect to Z? I need to calculate del A by del Z. It is not complicated to do the derivative of this with respect to Z. What I want to do is I want to convert this into time domain. 
Now, I know the relation between time domain and frequency domain whenever we do a Fourier transform. Uh, we know that if I take a del by del t Fourier transform of this, in the frequency domain it is equivalent to j, of omega, j omega. So, if I do a inverse Fourier transform, this delta omega is nothing but 1 by j del by del t, which is minus j del by del t. So, if I were to convert this into time domain, all what I need to do is to change this to wherever I have uh, delta omega, I need to replace it by minus j del by del t. This is the power of using Fourier transform. So, I could do that. So, I get del a by del t is instead of uh, delta omega, I have minus j del a by del t. Delta omega square is represented by the square of that. Delta omega cube is here. So, I can now do this expansion. And then I write del a by del z is equal to, I kind of rearrange the whole thing. There is a j cube minus j cube minus j square minus j and so on. I rewrite, I get a nice looking differential equation which says the way my pulse, so this is a very powerful equation. Uh, this one tells you how the envelope of the pulse a, uh, 0 of p or z of t how the envelope changes as it propagates along the length of the fiber. You can now find the envelope at any z of the fiber. Now, uh, I can do one more small trick because uh, I, I can either look at the pulse from outside or I can sit at the center of the pulse and move along with the pulse. So, if I move along with the pulse, it means that I do not have to really worry about the group velocity of the pulse, this uh, velocity with which the entire pulse is moving. I am only interested in finding out the difference in propagation constants uh, between the different frequencies. So, what I could do is, I could do a change in frame of reference. Uh, of course, here beta 1 is group velocity, beta 2 is uh, GVD parameter, beta 3, this we have already seen. So, we are going to change the transformation, you can, we are going to change the frame of reference uh, to that of the pulse. So, it is as if we are sitting at the center of the pulse and we are now figuring out what is happening to the pulse as it propagates through the fiber. So, we are sitting in a frame T which is T minus Z by. Uh, we are going to now uh, look at how this pulse is evolving when we are now sitting at the center of the pulse. We are not interested in the way in which uh, the, the entire pulse is moving, but we want we are interested in the way in which the uh, different frequencies are evolving as a uh, function of uh, time uh, and as a function of position. So we will move ourselves into the frame of reference of the pulse, and when we move into that uh, frame of reference uh, capital T. Uh, where we are, this, uh, this frame of reference is moving uh, with a speed beta 1, uh, the group velocity is uh, uh, given by, so this is 1 divided by group velocity, right. So, uh, if, if this uh, fr frame of reference is uh, moving with the group velocity of the pulse, then it means that I really do not see the pulse moving, all what I would see is only the other terms. So, I can write this as del a by del z is minus beta 2 in this changed frame of reference capital T minus beta 3 by 6 del cube by del t cube equal to 0.